So this question is that uh, here a car manufacturer charges this much. So you know to estimate the mean of the cost of you know all the repairs under such a warranty, a simple random sample of 40 repairs is selected. The mean is this, right? Mm -hmm. And sigma, the population standard deviation, is that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, in S. Are we good so far? Mm -hmm. Now it's asking for a 99% confidence interval, right? And we are going to use our calculator, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so today we are using only calculator, right? Okay, so let's, oops, come on, why am I doing that? Okay, see, so I got us. Okay. So we go to tests, right? Yep. What do we have to do here? Confidence interval, right? Mm -hmm. So where is interval? Where is interval? In S, I'm asking you. Look here. Seven, Tell me on the seven. Yeah, I'm using seven because see this here. I know the population standard deviation and the sample size is large, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to use seven now, right? Am I clear? And instead of data, I have the statistical summary here, right? Are we clear on this? Mm -hmm. So we go here. How much is sigma? 127, right? What's the sample mean? 267, right? And how sample size is what? 40, right? My confidence level is 0.99, right? Then I have to calculate, and here is my confidence interval, right? You know, am I am I clear here? Yeah. Which is uh, like two hundred fifteen point uh, twenty eight, you know, two hundred fifteen dollars twenty eight cents to three eighteen dollars seventy two cents, right? Yeah. So now that, it says that the answer for a for a of course mm -hmm. that the overall mean should be somewhere in there. Now it says, is the car company making profit on these extra warranties? They charge $750, right? Which is way outside of this range, right? Am I clear? Yeah, yeah, so looks, are. so we are confident they are making profit. Of course, they are make, right. they are doing business to make profit, right? Yeah. Okay. First, okay, it says, uh, you know, a clothes supplier would like to estimate the mean height of the adult males in a population, right? And they know the population standard deviation is 2.7 inches. And they are asking for what? How large a sample must be taken, right? Mm -hmm. To obtain the a confidence interval with margin of error of no more than how much? 0.25, right? Okay. All right. Now, if you look at this thing here, let's see, let's look at the, so see this here? That has to do with the sample size, remember, margin of error and sample size, that's how they are related in here, right? Okay, one moment, Oops, I don't know why it still gave me that right here. So, what we were discussing with Mary was uh, this. Okay, that is, so, I mean, this, th this equation is just this equation solved, right? Okay, now, this value here, oh, hi, Julie, how are you? Yeah, give me a second, I'll get you a chair, just a few seconds, I'll get you a chair, I promise. Okay, let's finish this one, and then I'll get you a chair, okay? All right, okay, so, where are we, where are we? We are here, right? So, we are going to work with this, okay? Am I clear? So the thing is uh, this, that uh, let's raise this, what comes in here, 2.7, 2. 2. right? Are we good? Very good. Okay, so we got 2.7 in here. And for the margin of error, uh, what goes in there? What goes? 0. 0.25, right? Okay, so we got this, right? Now we want to know who Z star is, right? Okay, now since there are two questions, let me keep two copies of this here, okay. right here, so that we can. Yes. So first, let's get that for 95% confidence interval, right? 
so 95 percent confidence interval we got this here we got this here right okay now in this this is not class so anytime even in class you should tell me when i'm losing you right if i'm losing you let me know okay all right we so and uh, you, you, you too, Evet. Okay. Yeah. Point. Not, otherwise, I'll start calling you Benaza. Hey. <laughs> okay. So now, so see this here. This is point nine five, and our Z star is this particular value of what? This particular value of Z, right? Am I am I clear? So if I use inverse norm from the calculator, right? Yeah. It would ask me for the entire area to the left because, you know, that just gives us the percentiles, right? So entire area to the left would be what? See, this is this and this. The two tails together is 5%, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this half would be how much? Two and a half, which as a proportion is written as what? 0 0.025 right mm -hmm. so how much area goes to the left of z star then these two added up right no sorry excuse me yeah this yeah. one yeah very good and this yeah and less uh, so this would be 0 0.975 right mm -hmm. are we good on this so we'll get the calculator and ask it to give us what we'll go to Second distribution in, in as you tell me where should I go? I, I want the percentile. So I'll go to three, right? Okay. And since I'm talking about a standard normal, I don't have to put the parameters in, right? So it tells me what? That that value is approximately whatever you have there. And if you remember it and used 1.96, I'm happy. All right. Am I clear on this? One question. Okay. All okay. right. So you have, um, mm -hmm. you need to find the ninety-five confidence interval. Right. So why do you have it like that? Like why? Like because I'm using the calculator, and for the inverse norm, if I want to get this critical value, it wants me to give the entire area to the left of this, right? And 95% referred only to the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, see, 95% referred only to the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, then I have to add this tail in in order to have correct output from this calculator, right? And why can't you have, if you have just 95, why can't you be from here to here and then have here the point oh fifty? Oh, I see from here to here and then go to point. Yeah, why is it like 0, um, 0 to 5 and then 0, 0 to 5 there? Okay, why? Oh, because, see, our, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Yeah, let's just, okay, see this here? First of all, my, my Z star, you know, it went on this premise, okay? that the area between negative z star and positive z star is 0.95 are you with me okay all right so it, so if i did this say if i if i gave it like 0 0.025 instead okay it will give me negative 1.96 all right okay good so I, I don't know it looks like we're communicating well so i understood your question you're not giving up on me right no. <laughs> okay good Okay, so where are we? So we are right here. So we got this as 1.96 approximately, right? Um, right, in this? And yeah, and Julie, I'll get you a chair as soon as we. No, it's not okay. Okay, so what will I put here then? I'll put here uh, 1.96. I could have put in the whole thing here. Okay, 1.96. Okay, so where there we are. Okay. And the number you found is the value. Right, exactly. And then I'll say multiply the two, right? Okay. Makes sense? Okay. So I would do this. And here, you see this here. That's what Mary was discussing with me. Look here, Ines. 
I, I'm going lazy here instead of even typing 1.96 just in order to be more precise I just said second answer okay and and or you could have put 1.96 we'll get very close answers okay mm -hmm. so then you have 2.7 yes Kasimir come in I'll get a chair for you all right so then we have uh, 0.25 right mm -hmm. squared okay so this is like 448.07 uh, so I need a sample of what size what 449 for this right am I clear because the, okay take your phone now that's okay it's office hours not oh, class outside. okay it's outside that's okay so that okay. would be the ninety-five. That's for the 95, okay. Before 99, let me go and grab some chairs for Casimir. Ah, uh, yes, those formulas I'll give you. Okay, good. So see this here? So now let's do the same thing for 99% confidence interval, right? Okay, so here we go. And 0.99, right? And now here I want Z star for... 99% confidence interval, right? How much is this tail here? This tail right here? 0, 0, 005 actually, right? Yeah. So when I go to the inverse norm, right? What uh, input do I have to supply to that guy? 0. 0.995, right? Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is like about two point uh, what five seven six right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So that's two point five seven six. Okay, all right. And then for the to to get the appropriate sample size, what I have to do is just uh, so I'm just doing it the lazy way again. Okay lazy way and the lazy gives better output here i like it right mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so there we go squared da, da, da. so here i need how many 774 people in the sample right are we good here okay very good so you're confident on these two 99 99.9 percent .9 confident mm -hmm. Right, good. Yeah. So now, in this case, we are again computing a confidence interval, right? And then we have a small sample, okay, for the weights of apples from some place, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is a kind of a natural, uh, you know, phenomena. So we're going to assume that the uh, that these follow a normal distribution, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have the sample mean as 9.2 and sample standard deviation as 1.5. Are we good on this? Right. And then it asks us to compute a 95% confidence interval. Right. Okay. So we will go here. We will go to stat. Okay. So here I will use the T interval because I'm using the sample standard deviation, right? Because population standard deviation is not available, right? Mm -hmm. Are we good, everybody, Julie? You said you don't you use the T-interval because there is no... What is it? Pop, there's no population standard deviation okay. given, right? Okay. So what's my sample mean here then? 9.2, right? Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Sample standard deviation, I covered it. How much is it? 1.5, right? And then my N is how many? 15. And what is my confidence level? 0.95. Then it simply asks me to calculate, right? Mm -hmm. I'll calculate. And here is your T interval, right? Make sense? Okay. Or oh, this is the confidence interval for all of them, right? Am I am I clear? When you put the answer, we have to write all these tables. Oh, you do be with this is already written there. You just write this and put in ounces. That will be better. Okay. Now it says which which of the following is a relevant assumption for this computation? Okay. All right. So it says there are at least hundred thousand apples in the orchard. 
then it says the population of the weights has a normal distribution okay tell me which one we, no remember this when we are using t and the sample is a small okay and it did give us that it is a simple random sample because that's a that's a big 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 requirement we need what that the population should have a normal distribution and in this case we assumed it all right am, am i clear because this is not like people's salaries which may not be nor have a normal distribution okay so we have this here see this here somebody is trying to open a new business right okay and they would like to know how many people want to see such a new business right through a survey mm -hmm. so in the survey to 231 out of 312 people wanted to see such a you know such a business there right mm -hmm. everybody with me mm -hmm. right so what happens we have to compute a 95% confidence interval for the proportion here, right? Mm -hmm. are, are we good on this? Mm -hmm. So let's go to stat. Then we go to tests, right? Mm -hmm. Do we see any interval for proportions on this screen? Do we? Yes or no? Yes. Where is, which one is that? Oh, it says proportion Z test, but here we have to get a like, and, and you know, an interval estimate, right? right? Okay, so let's Go keep down. scrolling down and down and down and down. Further down, further down, further down. Here we go, right? Okay. So how how much is our X here? 231. What is my N? 312, right? Mm -hmm. What's my confidence level? 95. Mm -hmm. And then it says calculate. So we got this. interval right are we good here very good so so here we are okay now notice this this number 0 0.74 is simply 231 divided by 312 right mm -hmm. am i clear mm -hmm. okay. and the interval is simply these values right and the end points are who? End points are 0 0.69174. And here we got what? 0 0.78903. Now, say somebody had asked us for margin of error as well. So we had two ways to do that. One is that we could do it by, by the formula. But we can do this from this output if we want. How? You know, right in the center is who? This guy, 0 0.7404, right? Because that's our estimate. Am I losing anybody? 0 0.74. Okay, Julie, is that good? Yeah, you can read a proportion. Right, right, right. Ines, am I clear? Yeah, but the, the answer for, for A will be the different parameters. The, yeah, exactly. That's the answer. Yeah, right. Tell me this. Say if I said, give me the margin of error of this estimate. What is the margin of error here? How would I, how, how do I get it very quickly? Uh, standard deviation. Uh, we can we can go that way, but it's written yeah. right here. Look at the picture and tell me. I think you can just make the difference. The, the biggest one. The difference minus, one. Minus the proportion mean. Minus this, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Julie, you 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 were saying a very bright thing, but here we can just get it like in a little shorter way, right? And how much is this? Zero point zero. Somebody, anybody, help quickly. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. I'll I'll just help myself. So <laughs> point seven eight nine zero three minus point seven four zero four, right? So that's like point zero four eight six three, right? Are we good? Mm -hmm. So that's the margin of error. That is. Uh, the you know the estimate is 74.04 percent with a margin of error of like 4.8 uh, you know 86 percent so let's look at the next part of this question it says this here that at least 
or rather how large a sample must be taken right mm -hmm. so that the margin of error is no more than three percentage points okay all right okay everybody comfortable right okay. so yes. let's see and and you see this here what julie was referring to is is that you know we have this formula here for margin of error right from which we got the sample size rule okay so how do we compute that see we got this right am i clear okay it's written in there now it's a 95 percent confidence interval right so for 95 percent confidence interval just short while ago we computed yes go ahead it's like 1.96 okay so it's 1.96 right what's the margin of error that they are talking that that they are wanting here three percent right oh it's the z star for 95 percent confident right okay so then we divided by What's the margin of error? What should I put in here for E? Uh, 0 0.04. Uh, uh, 3. You mean, no, no, it says it, uh, I want, uh, because three. we already had three. that, right? Mm -hmm. three. Now, P star oh. is a guess value, right? From a previous study, or if no such guess value is available, we use 0.5, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's written in your manual, right? Mm -hmm. So here we can use, the book uses the guess value like this one from 0 0.7404, right? Mm -hmm. Some more conservative people would use the one that's closer to 0 0.5, but just let's go by the book, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, and just use this, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's point, uh, what's that? 74, oops, just a second, I made a mistake, 0, 0.4. And then times 1 minus 0 0.7404. Am, am I clear here? Yes, so you get 820.42 and all that. So you will say what? That is a truck, you know, how many we need in the sample? Uh, 821, right? Am I clear? I need 821. Is this one completely good? So it says in the past, excuse me, 44% of those taking a public, you know, accounting qualifying exam have passed the exam on their first try, right? And it says later the availability of exam preparation books and tutoring sessions may have helped the likelihood of an individual's passing on his or her first try. I took it from the test bank. Okay. So it says in a sample of 250 recent applicants, 130 passed on their first attempt. Then they're saying at 0 0.05 level of significance, can we conclude that proportion passing on the first try has increased? All right. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. But you know, the way we do things in class, we do we formulate the hypotheses first. It's a test bank question, and you get test bank questions often, right? Mm -hmm. so let's go by the test bank. So remember this, null is what? No difference. Mm -hmm. No difference in this case is, doesn't matter. P is still how much? 0 0.44. Are we clear? Okay. Now, for the alternative, they're suspecting that it has increased, right? Okay. So your alternative is, is very good. P is greater than 0 0.0, 0 sorry, 0 0.44. Very nice. Are we good so far? Okay. And then it says state the hypothesis, the test is statistic. Now we are taking totally the calculator approach for this. So we will use the calculator and we go to stat. <coughs> okay, look at it and tell me what should I use? What should I? What's the first 
uh, the question is that we are testing this null hypothesis against this alternative, right? They gave us a 0 0.05 level of significance. So we are testing for a proportion here, right? So what, which option should I choose? Proportion, Z test, right? Okay, all right. So it was number five in there, okay? So what is my null hypothesis saying? That it is 0 0.44, right? Am I clear? My x is what? How many passed? 130, right? And then this is what? 250. Yeah, what should I choose here? You know, in view of, huh? I'm sorry? Greater than, right? That's right here, okay? And there you go. Okay. So what is the so test statistic is this, the Z value, right? Am I clear? The test statistic, it helps us, you know, obtain things on a standard scale. Right? Yes, did you get it? Uh, you just make sure. I get it. No, I got something different. Right. Oh, because you you said not equal to 0. 0.44. Oh, I see. I'm wrong. Oh, that's why. Yeah, exactly. I just, I don't know why did they, did it do that to me. Or why did I do you that? You saw that, but you didn't change No, you see, you know what happens? <laughs> on my uh, on this thing, if I press it, like, too fast, it goes twice, okay? okay. All right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, here. Okay. Same. See? Okay, good. So here, look here. This is my test statistic that we are like 2.55 away on the standard scale, right? Which is, you know, quite far. And uh, this right here is my p value, right? Am I making sense? This is my p-value, and the p-value, how does it compare with 0 0.05, less or more, or, so you tell me, please? It's less than 0 0.05, so when it's less, what would you do? Reject the null, right? And we shall conclude that at 5% five, five level of significance, the proportion passing in the first try has increased, right? Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we are talking about the mean weight of adults in a certain region is believed to be 160 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody is thinking that it might have, might be higher now, right? Okay, so they are going to take a sample of 100 adders and test, you know, and, t and do a hypothesis test at what? 5% level of significance, right? Mm -hmm. So what the null here will be? The null will be that the population uh, mean is uh, what? Is this still how much? Yeah, right. 160 you meant. 100 is one. Right. right. And then what's my alternative? That the population mean now is? Help. This is maybe may have become higher than this right am i clear mm -hmm. okay so and then they are showing us the results of the sample and in this case i know the population standard deviation right mm -hmm. so when that's the case when that's the case right i go to stat i go to tests what will i use i'll simply use the z test right because i know the population standard deviation here right mm -hmm. Am I clear? Okay. And I still have only summary stats. So what's the what's the population mean according to my null hypothesis? That's what this sub zero will refer to. 160. That's very good. And the population standard deviation sigma is uh, what? No, no, it's 35. See, 35 pounds right here. Mm -hmm. Sample size is 100 in S, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's 35, that's okay. And and what was my sample mean? 100 point 
five, three, very good. And how many do I have in my sample? Hundred, right? Mm -hmm. And alternative, I still have the same one selected. So that's oops, no, 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 don't do that. Mm -hmm. Greater than, and we'll say calculate, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, here we got even a tinier p-value, haven't we, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. So we will reject the null hypothesis because in, in comparison with uh, 0 0.05, it's much smaller. So you do what? Reject the null, right? Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. See, this is the p-value, which is 5.5 .5 times. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we write this value in a standard notation? Zero point. Oops. Remember this? This mm -hmm. decimal will walk to the left by how many? Five steps. So five, uh, oops, five, five, four, less than 0 0.05. We reject the null at what? 5% mm -hmm. level of significance, right? Mm -hmm. Are we good? Mm -hmm. So now it says an expensive medication from a particular company states this as the contents of the bottle, right? Everybody clear? Okay. Now the thing is somebody wants to test if they are underfilled. That is, you know, really there is not as much amount as there are as it indicates. I mean, I, I, I encounter this problem all the time. Like my mother's glaucoma drops, you know. They're so expensive, okay? And I ran out of them, you know, earlier. Fortunately, I mean, you know, and they're very expensive, you know. So, so whatever. I mean, let's look at this. This is a practical kind of question. And now, filling process. We can assume that filling process. If there's a machine set with filling process, that the filling process is, you know, the the contents will show a normal distribution, okay? So here we have. A random, we have the content measures of what? 10 randomly selected bottles, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and we have to see, and, and our, if we were suspecting that they are being underfilled. So in this case, so what we are uh, testing, our null is that the population mean is uh, how much? 100 ml. We will just assume that give it the benefit of doubt and here what population mean is or yeah, let me just say this less than 100 ml right am i clear mm -hmm. now we don't know the population standard deviation here so which test do you think we have to use then the t test right are we clear mm -hmm. Since we don't know the population, mm, the standard deviation. Exactly. So we will use the t-test. Now here we will go differently because we don't have the summary stats. We are just given a bunch of numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. So what we will do is, and it might have been a good idea to have looked at a box plot, mm -hmm. okay, to see if there is any strong skewness, all right? But here we are assuming that they come from a normal population right mm -hmm. okay normally distributed population but it's always a good idea to check it into you know for a small data set okay mm -hmm. but so anyway so let's say we have it in data so my null is 100 right am i clear mm -hmm. now it wants me to list the data in a column right and remember how do we get to the columns it's because stats you edit very nice stats Mm -hmm. Edit, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll put the data in L1. So let's get rid of everything that's in L1. So we get, we go there. We say clear, right? Mm -hmm. It's all out, right? Okay. So watch me very carefully enter these guys. So we get 96, 100, 2. And then next one is 99.4, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have 100.4. Five, right? Mm -hmm. Then I have 97.5, 98.7, right? Mm -hmm. 103.4, then 97.6, what? 5, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 99. 
four. Are we good here? Mm -hmm. Did you guys see that I entered everything correctly? Yes. Yes. Anybody? Yes, so I know so many smart people watching me, so I should be okay. Uh, now, notice this. First of all, all these numbers were different, I think. Yes. So we, you know, type them only once. Sometimes you'll have repeats, so people write it as a frequency table, but we are not doing that in this course, especially in a calculator, okay? All right? We don't have to do it that way. So when we go back to our, you know, our dialogue here with the calculator, we got this, right? Okay, so date, so mu is this, and we'll say, okay, I have placed the data in the, in L1 for you, right? Everybody clear? And I'm saying frequency is 1, means that I have entered every number just once. I'm not, I'm not putting the frequency in any other column, okay? Alternative here is less than that, right? Then we'll say what? Calculate it for me, right? Mm -hmm. Say enter and there you go. Okay. All right. So this is my like my T statistic is uh, how much? Let's see. Negative 1.005, right? So that gives us a relative standing on the T scale, right? And my P value is 0.17 which is bigger than 0 0.05. So, uh, Yvette, what do we do? We do not reject the null, right? Am I clear? Can you say we accept? You can say accept the null or def, I mean, why not? But people say do not reject the null. All right. <laughs> okay. It's like, you know, when they, when they, when they announce a verdict, they don't say innocent. They say not guilty. Mm -hmm. All right. But some sometimes when, you know, in lots of like classical system, you know, they, they say, the judge may say that the defendant is innocent or whatever. Okay. Everybody clear? So here it says the electricity supply in a certain region appears, appears to show a lot of voltage fluctuation. Okay, from the required value of 400, sorry, 240 volts. Okay, all right. So, so somebody wants to check if the mean voltage is different from 240. Okay, because it goes too high, the, you know, bad for appliances, too low is also bad, and too high is dangerous as well. Right, everybody good? Mm -hmm. So, what my null here would be? Null is that mean of the just let me just say pop mean okay instead of population mean that equals what 240 and what my alternative in this case is that population mean is not equal to 240 and let me just put the sign not equal to here right not equal to. Are we good here? Okay. Now let's assume that we looked at these guys, you know, via box plot, all right, okay, or a histogram, and we did not find any strong skewness, okay? Am I clear? Yeah. Okay. So we are testing for mean, okay, and we see this. We don't know the population standard deviation, so we will still use what the? t-test. Very good. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. And again, we have only the data, right? Mm -hmm. My null is 240. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we, let's go ahead and enter all the values in my what? In the, in the L1. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So here, watch me do that. Okay. Two, two, two point what? Two. Okay. 217.9, right? 211.9, right? 219.7, right? 208.8, right? 229.5, right? 219.4, Okay, I could have stopped the recording, but that's okay, right? 
and enter the numbers but watch carefully okay, okay. 209 okay and then 208.2 okay 196.2 right 211.7 199.9, right? 201.1, 218 even. Did I enter everything correctly? Okay, good. Very good. So let's go to our stat tests. We are taking, doing the T test, right? So everything is the same. We have the data in L1, right? And this time my alternative is not equal to, right? So we say calculate. And this time my T is, you know, negative 11.9. So we know we are very, very far from the standard statistic, yes. So, you know, which just tells you, you know, that on the T scale, how far we are. And even though t is flatter than z, still negative 11 is like too far to the left there. And the p-value is uh, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 1, 0, 7, 1, which is less than what? 0 0.05. So we reject the null and I go and buy a voltage stabilizer all right everybody clear clear okay so but it doesn't happen that much in our area i mean you know pepco was pretty good in sandy wasn't it right okay so anyways every, everybody good okay so we we are rejecting the null so we have the test statistic we will reject the null now it's asking for a 95 percent confidence interval well let's go ahead and give it that and since we are Working purely through the calculator, that's what we would do. Tests. This is Z interval, but which interval do we want here? We want a T interval, right? We'll go for the T interval, so everything will be the same, right? They want a, we are going to look at a 95% confidence interval. So since we have en everything entered the same way, Let's get our interval. NS, am I going too fast? Wait, I got lost in the You got lost in something? Okay, okay. Where do, you, where do you put the 95%? Okay, I'll go back and I'll show you. It was just 95% by default there, so I did not put anything. Let me show you one moment. Uh, where's calculator? Here. Stat, right? Mm -hmm. Tests. Eight, okay. See, it was already 0 0.95. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I wanted 90%, I would have put 0 0.90, yeah. right? Yeah. Are we good now? Yeah. Okay, good. So see this here? The interval is 207.07 .07 to 217.14, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Now, it says, does this interval contain the value 240? You tell me? No, right? It doesn't contain... So then it says explain the usage of a 95% confidence interval for a two-sided hypothesis test, you know, at 5% level of significance. So what happens here? If this null is rejected, right, at 5%, a 95% interval excludes that value at, you know, ex excludes the value suggested by the null hypothesis, right, doesn't it? Okay, and if you look at the writings, it's written in detail for you, right? Okay. Take a moment to read it. What are we trying to see here? That, you know, what is the difference between the medical expenses between two regions, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to estimate. Yeah. So, what you did, you you took samples of like, you know, like medical expenses of uh, randomly selected people, okay? And there you have it in the table, right? Do we know the population standard deviations or we don't? We don't, right? Okay, so first let's go to the calculator. Okay, stat. Okay. Oh, we are, we are creating an interval, right? Okay, so let's go for intervals. 
So here you go, z interval, t interval, two sample z, two sample t, ask me to stop, where should I stop? Two. We want two sample t, right? Am I clear? Okay, so here we go. And this time we have summary stats, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Yes. So for the region 1, the mean is what? 17.98. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. The standard deviation is 913. Mm -hmm. Now obviously it's not coming in from a normally distributed population, but the sample sizes are like large. Both of them are larger than 50. So we are still going to let the T procedure continue because of the robustness, right? Yeah. Okay, are we clear? Mm -hmm. So 11, uh, 56, right? Mm -hmm. 4, 65, okay. And how many in the sample? 54. Are we clear so far? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Confidence level is 99%, so we will do 0.99, right? Now, for pooled, we are saying no, it's more conservative. First of all, we can see that these standard deviations are different, but we are going to say no because more conservative, and that's the approach that we are taking in this, co in this course, right? Then let's give it a command to calculate. And here the answer calculated for you that the mean of the differences is any anywhere between these two values, right? Mm -hmm. Are we clear on this? Right. right. Yeah. So let's look at this question here. It says to test if the participation in a communication training will result in a higher student evaluation, so randomly select a group of 20 members participate in a training and difference in their student ratings, you know, before and after the training are recorded here. I mean, you, you see these days, like, you know, all over the college, you are being asked to evaluate us, your teachers, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. So is that kind of a thing and say my evaluations have, you know, just come very bad because I have, I shouldn't, my, generally mine are very bad, but I'm not, okay. But that's okay. I mean, I'm towards retirement anyways okay? <laughs> okay so so here what so what do you do it's like you're not taking you know is this that send some people to that training and just compare it with the 20 other people who are not in training remember this in this case we pair the mm -hmm. observations right mm -hmm. am i am i clear mm -hmm. so here our focus is on the differences right am i am i clear mm -hmm. and now here just for our own uh, con convenience you know these are you know these are summarized right here for us okay mm -hmm. yeah. so in this case tell me when i when i test whether the difference the, whether whether the mean of the difference is still a zero or it's uh, positive which test will i use uh-huh Okay, let me go to this. Yes, which test will I use? Tell me. Louder. We will use the T test, right? Mm -hmm. And it's still, you see, these differences, differences themselves is, you know, they're, they're, they're one population, so we can use just one sample T test on the differences, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? NS, am I clear? Yes. Okay. So then we will use the one sample t test, and of course we should have ruled out any strong skewness. Let's assume that we did, and I think before putting the problem it was done. Okay, so null is what? That difference is zero, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. And sample mean is written right here. It's 0 0.353, right? Mm -hmm. The standard deviation is 0 0.06. Six, right? Mm -hmm. Sample size is uh, twenty, and we—I mean, we have done this thing. We are just repeating it, but you know how it will work, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, the p-value is really small, right? Am I clear? Mm -hmm. So you will say, well, the the uh, you know the the evaluations have gone up after the communication training, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Okay. So in here, what we have? 
here is a bank okay they want to see this if there is a difference in the utilization of a 24 hour banking machine and this question is from a very very old test bank all right okay so but it's still stayed there so we can still work on it okay so they're comparing males and females so what is the you know what is their uh, rate here so like weekly withdrawal rate from the from that teller machine so they see of these 300 of the 300 males that they had 42 percent made two or more transactions you know before leaving and out of 250 females 50% made at least two transactions while at the machine. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's just a textbook problem that we took, but let's see how would we, how would we see the, uh, you know, the solution, right? So tell me for the purpose of our test, what do we want? We want an interval, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Interval for what? We want interval for propor Proportion. proportions, right? Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, so proportions to population one, how many? Two, two right? So it's two, pro so we want two proportions, Z interval, right? Mm -hmm. Now say we take uh, X, like population one as that of males, how do I get my X1? It's 42% of 300, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Now make sure it wants a whole number here, all right? Yes. So if it's not a whole number, you'll have to revise it to a whole number. Otherwise, it's going to give you an error. Are we good on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then N1 is what? Mm -hmm. 300. Very good. X2 is 50% of 1, uh, 125. 125. Yes, yes. It's a, you are so smart. Thanks. And what confidence level we do we want? 95%. Let's say calculate. And here we go. All right. So if we look at this, this is a negative sign. Okay. And for this one, it says do the male and female customers, you know, differ in this uh, in terms of making multiple transactions i mean even though i mean it, it barely contains zero but we always like give null the benefit of the doubt right okay so what we so what we would say is no they do not differ why they do not differ because zero is contained in the interval right mm -hmm. are we all comfortable on this right. So now here what we are doing, we are testing this null hypothesis, right? Where mu is 20 and the alternative is what? Mu is less than 20, right? Uh, for this purpose, okay? And we are going to go over calculations because we are just, uh, you know, getting friendly with the calculator. And here we are given that the sigma is 4 and level of significance is how much? 1%, right? Are we clear on this? Okay. Now it says find the power, which is one minus the probability of the type two error of the, this test. If in fact mu is how many? 15 hours, right? Am I clear? So first let's calculate the probability of the type two error. Then we'll just subtract it from one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So type two error, right? So here not. Uh, it occurs when when we are not rejecting a false null hypothesis, right? Am I clear? Okay. And so in this case, they're saying if the null hypothesis is really false, it's actually 15. You know, find the probability of a type 2 error and consequently the power, right? Okay. So now our calculations will be based on the like our sample calculations will use the value 20, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's how they will catch or not catch, right? Okay, so here, what you will do, we shall not reject the null if the sample mean is 
less than less than what let's see less than what look at this here okay that is again your calculation will be based on what that the mean is how much oops uh, 20 20 sigma is 4 see the population standard deviation is 4 right okay, so mean is 20 right makes sense and uh, what happens you will reject if your p value is less than how much point zero one right am i making sense mm -hmm. so that's when you will reject otherwise you will not reject right make sense right. so what happens for the sample means this is the rejection region right and and what then this is the acceptance region right okay acceptance right and notice this i made a mistake okay what mistake did i make I said if the sample mean is, oh, well, I didn't make any mistake, but I was intending to make a mistake. Proportion. See, the, no, no, not proportion. We are still talking about the mean, right? Is, see, if the sample mean comes out in this area, then we will not reject, right? Okay, I'm going by Casimir's thing. Instead of saying not rejecting, I'm saying accepting. See, if the sample mean is more than what? this value right here that we would like to determine right am i making sense and what is this value this value is the first percentile simply right mm -hmm. isn't it mm -hmm. so more than the first percentile mm -hmm. of this above distribution right mm -hmm. am i making sense mm -hmm. and here we are talking about what the distribution of sample means, right? Mm -hmm. Because we are, you know, going to have inference about, okay? So anyways, everybody clear? Mm -hmm. So, so now this is 20 and this is what we got here. So we want the, what, the first percentile of this normal distribution mm -hmm. and our curiosity is what? Who is this value, right? Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get that value. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll go to calculator, right? Okay, say clear here. Okay, now we are not doing any test, right? We just have to do our calculation. Mm -hmm. And for percentiles of a normal distribution, what do we use? We use the inverse norm feature, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? So that's 0 0.01, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Comma, what's that? 20, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I have to write the standard deviation. Now, 4 is the population standard deviation, but we are talking about distribution of sample means. So I'll have to divide it by the square root of the sample size. And here are 40 people in here, mm -hmm. right? So come on, please. So what this value comes out to be about 18.53, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. So this is like, excuse me. So we got the answer is 18.53, right? Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So that means more, okay? Sam if sample mean is more than what? 18.53. Okay. All right. We will not reject the null. And if the null is bad, we will have committed a type 2 
error, right? Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Now comes the main part. The part is this. That is, we are being asked, say, the, if the mu is as bad as 15 hours, right? Am I clear? Say, faculty union and the management are talking about it, and this is the management's perspective. Why should we pay these faculty that much? So, say, if it is 15 hours, right? Then they want to catch a type 2 error, okay? Probability of a type 2 error in case it is as low as 15 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. So, you will, so type 2 error would be which probability? So, of a type 2 error is the probability of what? Having a math value more than what? 18.53 when the population mean is what? 15. Very good, Julie. Is 15 hours, right? Am I clear? Ines, is that good? Okay. So here we go. So in this case, what we are doing, we shall go, oh, now we are calculating the probability. That means we want the area under the relevant normal curve, right? Okay, I'm going to be lazy. Instead of typing 18.53, I'll just say second answer, right? The, now there is nothing to the right end point, right? Am I making sense? So what I would do, I'll go 10 to the 99, and then this is 15. Well, sigma is still the same, and sample size is still the same. So see, my probability of type 2 error is very tiny, isn't it, right? Mm -hmm. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. And who is my who is the power of the test that is not letting a guilty walk or not losing money in case like if it's 15 hours, these guys are not really working that much and we are paying them or whatever. Okay, so here we will have 1 minus what? Second answer, right? So it's quite powerful a design, right? Am I clear? If 15 is the number that concerns them, okay? <laughs> Now, so this one is a pure and simple arithmetic question now, right? Mm -hmm. That we are testing this hypothesis, 80, that you know, population mean is 80 versus the population mean is not 80 at 5% level of significance based on simple random sample of size 35 and sigma equals 20, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to compute the probability of a type 2 error if actually mu is how much? 100. Five, all right. Mm -hmm. Everybody clear? Mm -hmm. So here we go. So what we got here then? So so what will happen? That we shall n not reject the null if the Sample mean is between, yes, let's go for that. So it's a two sided test, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. It's a two sided test. So in two sided test, what happens? Since both the tails make up of the p value, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to have uh, what? 0.05 in this direction. Sorry, uh, what's that? Yeah, 5. 0.05 in this direction and 0.05 in this direction, right? No, no 0 0.025. 0 0.025. 0 0 okay, very good. Very nice. I'm getting in trouble, right? Very nice. Thanks for helping me out. So. So we will not reject the null if either this happens. Or we are in here, so who goes in the middle? 0.95, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So let's compute these values then. First, get this guy here. Uh, excuse me. 
right? Okay, get the calculator. So what I would do, second, okay, inverse, and which percentile do I want to? Point fifth here, comma, and my assumed mean, like you know, my, uh, we will work with the prem premise that is 80 mm -hmm. and what is sigma 20 mm -hmm. then I have divided by 35 good okay so this value is what 73.37 approximately right mm -hmm. so excuse me so this is like 7 no I'm so sorry 73.37 units right mm -hmm. now this one you can go directly but <coughs> since we have the calculator let's take the shortcut right. for this one which percentile am I looking for I'm looking for the entire area to the left right so I'm looking for which percentile 97.5 right mm -hmm. are we clear so 9 right mm -hmm. 7 and then what 5 is already there mm -hmm. so that will be 86 uh, point what 63 approximately right that was actually my question so, just so, so did you take on the other question oh so i made a mistake on uh, uh, all right okay okay all right okay okay i see so we will we'll check it out okay yeah. so just a second so it's, is that good everybody clear yeah that's so good. if the sample mean is in between uh, these two seven, and 86.63 so what we will have to do is type two error okay for the population mean 105 is what the probability of ob obtaining I'm sorry obtaining a sample mean between what and what what, what happened, Julia? No, 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 think it, huh? 86.63 when actually it is 105, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go for it, right? So here what we are doing, okay. let me just put that in this document so that when people see it, the other people in class, they will let know how we got it. Oops, sorry. There we are, good. Okay, sorry, going back here. So now I want second distribution, right? Mm -hmm. I want normal CDF, right? Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, what? 73.37, comma, 86.63, and then the actual mean is 105, okay? And then 20 over square root of, yeah, what's that? A sample size? 35, right? Mm -hmm. And that should give you the answer. It's, a, it's again, you know, very small probability, right? Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry about that. So here is the, if we are just using the calculator for everything, mm -hmm. right? Are we good? Yes, sir.